What's up, boys? You guys know I'm one of the best in the world with the sticks, and that has been enhanced this last month as I have partnered with Razer, one of the most recognizable brands in gaming and esports across the world. They have award-winning technology, and now they're taking it from the PC, and they're bringing it to the console. I'm proud to be one of the people that introduced you guys to the Wolverine V2. This is their newest controller that is equipped to use with Xbox. The new Xbox Series X has come out, and this has taken my game to the next level. There's great features about it man they have shoulder buttons right here that allow you to program different buttons much like paddles also can change the thumbstick sensitivity that's one of the great features along with the wolverine 2 man you can also get headsets all different types of things you can use with your xbox because you know razor sees that console gaming is a big deal and they're going to continue to push forward with their efforts in console gaming let me take you to the app that they have actually now that you can go ahead and use with your razor controller literally an app on your xbox where this is my profile right here you see i have my buttons mapped they're called the middle buttons up here m1 and m2 i have one map to a so i can jump in different shooting games and the other one i have mapped to l uh the left stick i hate pressing in the left stick in games i don't care what game it is i hate pressing in the left stick you can also change your thumbstick sensitivity you know if you want it you know be a little slower be a little faster whatever game you want to be you can change it to your ability also vibration i turn it off i think it only distracts i don't think any professional gamers play with vibration on a controller it's more of a casual thing so i turn mine all the way off so that's what it is and that's pretty much you know what the thing all the different things the wolverine can do for you so let's go on. i'm gonna give you guys absolutely i'm gonna give you guys five tips to help you become better with your stick skills now these are things you may know things you've seen me do uh, and things you may need to add to your game man but these are probably the top five things where a controller like this or you know your thumbs in general will help you become a better man player so let's get into it all right boys the first one we're gonna go over is turbo when to use it when not to use it is it good for you when should you not be holding turbo when should because this is a, like a big deal that not a lot of people know but i i fully now i i fully believe all of these things to be true in my experience of playing madden for the last 20 years now, I want to run inside zone. I run offense only. When I want to work on my stick work, when I want to work on how the game works and how you know how I can improve in the open field, I like to work in offense only. Uh, to be honest, the defense is souped up in practice mode. It's kind of it's not even a good representation of the game. But for turbo, what I will tell you this: this is simple. You know, one in between the tackles turbo should never be held i'm telling you the only time you should be looking for turbo is if you have 10 yards of space to run straight if that makes sense now it could be sideways like if someone's behind you and you're running you could turbo here to get to get the angle on them to get up the field for sure and the number one thing that you guys don't realize when you hold turbo it really does make the defense disengage a little bit more you guys are probably always mashing turbo always going on um you know you know, it's hard to not hit turbo. It's almost like a panic thing. Faster, faster, faster. Let me get through the hole faster. But this is the trick that I do. If I'm running the ball, it's first and 10. I'm going to run. I know it's a short yard situation. or I don't want to hit a big play. I literally take my hand. This is the Razor controller. I literally take my finger here and I hide it behind here behind the entire controller so in other words some people put two fingers up here some people play claw and put like don't ask me but when i want to run the ball and want to make sure i don't hit that turbo prematurely i go ahead and literally hold the controller like this hide my index finger so i don't naturally just smack down on turbo that's one of the ways i make sure i don't hit turbo so if i want to get through these little creases these little b gaps and a gaps and whatnot i want to go ahead and, and not hit turbo all right, let's get into my favorite open field move. This is my favorite one, um, and that's the spin move. You know, I, I think it's been patched, or not patched, but it's been nerfed in recent years. The last, ever since Man 18, 19, 20, the double spin or precision spin was really, really good. Now, I will tell you, it has been nerfed this year. It has been nerfed. The spin is not that great, but I'll show you the way that I do spin, and I do still think it's a very viable open field move. Uh, and, and for me, you can definitely add it to your repertoire. It is a 45 degree thing. I think all spins are better 45 degrees. I'll run to the end zone here, but going 45 degrees, that means going towards the pylon. Uh, if you guys were not in physics class or whatever class it, it <laughs> uh, degrees has, uh, but the 45 degrees, then I want to no turbo and go back the other way. Essentially I go from, you know, what is it like two o'clock running to the pylon two o'clock and I want to 
take my left stick, I'm going two o'clock right now, I wanna take my left stick, jam it back to 11 and spin back the other way. So drastically goes from 45 degrees one way to 45 degrees the other way. Just like that, I'm able to take change my running back. Now I'll tell you, I do not hit turbo for this. I let go of everything and just be, now we're back on turbo back the other way. Most of the time when you're going 45 degrees, you're gonna have another defender running the opposite way of 45 degrees. So if you can go ahead and catch that spin and change your direction that quickly, it is a very effective move. Also, it will work on the computer. It will work on the computer and a lot of times, man, when people are clicking off, a lot of people click off, a lot of people don't have the nuts to go tackle you themselves. So with a lot of people clicking off, anything that works on a computer is a plus. So that's the way I go ahead and use the spin. So you're not gonna be hitting turbo, you're gonna be using the spin. Let's go ahead and get into the gusto, get into what you guys like to hear about. That's the stop and go. The stop and go, how do I stop and go? Uh, stop and go is so, I wanna learn how to do that. It's one of my biggest questions that I get no matter what content I post. How do you do the stop and go? That's, but you kinda just stop and go. You know, you kinda just, you're holding the stick up at 12 at twelve o'clock, right? To run forward. You bring it back to zero, not to six, that's one of the problems. People think you go back to six o'clock. Sometimes you can, but especially on next gen, you cannot go back to six o'clock. It's almost you go from 12 and you bring it all the way back or you bring it just to negative. Now, this is why I love offense only because you don't, you know, you have time to practice this all the way up the field, you know? So once you get this down and it's not something, it's not something you can, I mean, you can do it sideways too. That's the beauty of it. You know, it's not just a north and south thing. It can be an east and west thing as well. So like I said, you kind of just go back from 12 o'clock back to zero, you know, and if you don't get, if you're not getting back to zero, you can go, you can go all the way back to six o'clock, smack it all the way up against the base of the, the hole, pause. This is something that I do all the time. When my videos are uploading, when I'm watching another stream, when I'm watching basketball and there's a commercial, if I'm watching the Eagles on Sunday and there's a commercial, I will be in offense only just doing stuff like this. How can I, you know, how can I move my player different? How can I, you know, get better momentum and change the way I move, spin move? And, and every player is different. You know, if you have Derrick Henry, he's not gonna move the same as Barry Sanders. He's not. Uh, the, the change of direction, the time that they stop, uh, zero to 60, so to speak, is kind of all different, you know, but if you can master this with each individual player, you'll become better, better in the open field. So, all right, boys, this is one I love, and this is one of the biggest skill gaps in Madden that you guys need to get doing, and that's swerving, swerving with your wide receiver, and why we, I've done videos on this before, I talk about it all the time, if you guys watch me play, you notice I click on every single catch, every single one, whether it's the running back, whether it's a deep streak, whether it's a post, a corner route, a flat route, by doing this, you can dictate the angle your wide receiver will take when he catches the ball. You know, and that's great for possession catches, rack catches, aggressive catches, any type of catch. If you can dictate where your receiver goes, it will make you a better player. And I'm gonna give you a couple examples of this. And number one is bunch trail to post route, right? Uh, and we're gonna sit back here with Jalen Hurts, you know, and we're gonna throw the ball up right here. And it just depends on the angle that you want to take. And, and most of that depends on where your defenders are. I have Alshon, right? He's running his post here to that, to right here. So let's assume there's a cover two. There's a safety here and there's a safety here. What you want to do is you want to catch this ball with the momentum to run away from these guys. Now, if you want to run away from somebody on the left, you might, like I did in this picture, I went hard to the left, pause. See, I went left like that. Then I came back right, and that gets my momentum going to the right rather than straight up the field. Do you see the difference in, in this one right here is that one, I go left up here, then come back this way. That way, I'm headed to the right side. I'm headed away from a safety that would be over here. I'm headed straight to the right. Boom, and I can get up here and get to the end zone if somebody's on the left of my wide receiver. Now, this time, we're gonna go just up the field. If there's somebody behind me, or we can even go right side. You know, let's say that time I took my took Alshon Jeffrey underneath and went straight up to the goalpost to run my head in the goalpost. As you see it right here, we'll do the same thing. I'm running a post route with Alshon Jeffrey like this, right? Now Jalen Hurts doesn't have the best arm, but I, I bring him back this way and then go towards the goalpost. So instead of catching this with an angle towards the sideline, I'm gonna catch this with a head full of steam 
straight to the goalpost. You see the difference in the two catches. One was going to the right, and then the other one is going straight to the goalpost here. Just a different way you can click on a wide receiver and change their angle and change where they're going. Another one I'll tell you right over here, Jalen Rager. We have a corner route to the sideline. Corner routes have been a staple in Madden for as long as I have been alive. But don't you guys hate when you throw the corner route, right? And your guy doesn't get his feet in, right? He might have got his feet in. Who knows? That's up to the referee. But for me, you control whether you get your feet in or not. But we'll throw it over here. And make sure I step in bounds before I go to the sideline. I took control of this, uh, this wide receiver. Instead of running him straight to the sideline, what I did was bring him out here then go to the sideline. What that does, it allows the timing to when the ball gets to your receiver, he's right on the sideline for the perfect catch. See, there it is, a little step inside, click on, boom, no doubt about it. Plenty of space to tap those toes, get the feet in bounds. All right, boys, let's talk about lurking. Let's talk about using your user on defense because it's easy to do it when you're the one dictating where the ball goes, you're the one controlling everything. You're the one that makes things happen, essentially. And uh, I will show you, probably this will be the biggest tip of advice if you guys aren't doing this yet, and that's on the defensive side of the ball. But let's go ahead. I I'm the Eagles right now. We're just in a cover two right now. One of my favorite defenses to run. Uh, and what you're going to do, uh, most importantly, is you're going to blitz your user, right? Blitzing your user, is if you're not doing this, you're kind of been out of the loop. What blitzing your user does, it, it removes the change direction rating. That doesn't matter anymore. Your player will move freely. He will move quickly. He will have a lot more agility, a lot more uh, stamina, and be able to really go after the ball. And the most underrated thing about blitzing your user, if the quarterback breaks the pocket or steps up in the pocket, you can click off. And your guy's not going to go into a deep blue. He's not going to run into a purple zone on the side of the field. He's going to go get the quarterback. So you're kind of like a pseudo spy in that once the quarterback steps up, you can click off, that guy will attack, and you'll do your job. But most important thing with lurking is having an idea of where you want to go after the snap. You know, and having an idea of what you have covered on the field. You know, you have to understand your, def your other 11 people you're playing off of uh, to control your lurk. Now, if I'm sending some type of heat, like if I bring this guy down here and I'm sending some heat. So this is what I mean about understanding your defense. You know, I might even go crazy and, and, and do something like this. I'm sending the dogs, right? You know, if I'm sending the dogs, it might be a first read type of lurk where I'm going to take the first drag or the first flat route or the first streak, the first one. Now, if I go back to something like this, you know, you got, guys might like to run something like this, a three-man rush. Now I know he's going to have more time in the pocket, so I have to be more uh, conservative with my lurk. But 90% of the lurking, the user picks you see guys get, is happens before the play and giving themselves an idea of where they want to go. Right there, we made the quarterback throw the ball away because we had a hard flat out there to guard that flat. Now, if I have a hard flat over here, I know I have nothing to guard deep over here on the right side. So maybe that's where I have to go. You know, you also have to take into account that uh, what the offensive player wants to do. Now we're in bunch here, so you know, they're probably looking for that corner route to the right side, you know, and, or they're looking for a crossing route going right to left. One or the other, and, and you have to get, you have to understand what they want to do down in distance. Do they want to run? Do they want to pass short? Do they need to go deep? Is there only 40 seconds left in the half? Uh, and that all these factors go into where your user is going to go. It's not, I will tell you, when when on a, as a defensive player, when people snap the ball, you're not reacting. It's it is, I I, I believe it's about 90% anticipation and maybe 10% reaction. You know, there's not a oh, this he, he surprised me with the play, man. And a lot of times when somebody surprises you with a play, it's a good play, you know, and it's a good job by the offensive player. But uh, the more you anticipate, the more you react, and the more you understand where your user is going to go, the more effective you can be as a as a defensive player. But the number one tip I want you guys to use for your user, and if you're using this Razor controller, is blitz your user. It's going to help you so much. It's going to make you cover sideline to sideline. And if you're able to cover five routes in one play, that's not the game's fault, man. That's your opponent's fault for having bad spacing on the field. So, like I said, uh, there's so many things we could break down, and a lot of that you can check out Madden Turf for defensive ebooks and things of that nature. But the biggest tip you, that will help your man game, if you're not already blitzing your user, it will take you to the next level. So let's go back over it again, boys. 
we have what do we got we got the spin we got the stop and go we got when to hold turbo when you're running plays use this razor controller like set like so so you're not holding turbo when you don't need to also man we got the swerve get your receivers in the best spot to go ahead and make big plays down the field and not not get cheated man when we have a touchdown on the post we want a touchdown and when we have a sideline possession catch we want a sideline possession catch so uh all these things and like i said defensively blitz your user those are the five tips i can give you guys to help improve your stick skills in madden now check out this razor controller the link is below man if you're looking for a new piece of equipment with your new xbox series x you're looking to take your game to the next level this controller helps me do moves like these